The cell is the smallest structural and functional unit of the body having the ability to live on its own and making up all the tissues and organs of the body. For example, one inch of skin has approximately 19 million cells. Cells undergo a series of changes as a part of the cell cycle leading to its growth and division. This entire process is carefully controlled and regulated. That leads us to the question, what happens when this control is lost? The cells begin uncontrolled and unregulated cell growth and multiplication, eliciting a loss in the architectural orientation and uniformity, eventually precipitating the formation of malignancy or cancer. Skin cancer is one of the most prevalent types of cancers today and is very destructive. We will now delve into basal cell carcinoma, a cancer arising from the basal cells of the epithelium of the skin. The skin is the body's largest organ. It has several layers, but the two main layers are the epidermis or the outer layer and the dermis or the connective tissue. Skin cancer begins in the epidermis, which is made up of three kinds of cells, squamous cells, basal cells and melanocytes. In this video, We'll be looking into the causes, clinical features, histology, and the treatment of a type of skin cancer, basal cell carcinoma. Basal cell carcinoma is a type of non-melanotic skin cancer which originates from the basal cells, a type of cell that produces new cells as the old ones die. Although it does not have a metastatic potential, it remains a dangerous lesion because of its subtle and relentless growth potential. Since it causes a lot of local infiltration and destruction burrowing into the adjacent tissues, it is also called a rodent ulcer. It is the most common skin malignancy after squamous cell carcinoma and represents 70-80% to 80 of skin cancers, mainly affecting the light-skinned individuals. Gross differences are noted in the percentage of skin cancer in Asians 2 to 4 percentage and blacks 1 to 2 percentage as compared to the Caucasians 35 to 40 percent. The lesion most often affects the sun exposed areas of the face that is nose, cheek and the periorbital areas. An easy way of remembering is this lesion grows in the regions where the teardrops roll down on the face usually the middle third area. It is often sometimes referred to as the tear cancer. It can also affect the shoulders and the extremities involving the non-hair-bearing skin. You may be wondering, since everyone is exposed to the sun, can they develop basal cell carcinoma? Safe to say, it's not just one factor that leads to the malignancy. Individuals who have lighter skin pigmentation, a long history of chronic sun exposure and several predisposing hereditary syndromes are the most at risk. One common hereditary syndrome is the nevoid basal cell carcinoma syndrome, consisting of multiple odontogenic keratocysts, skeletal abnormalities, multiple basal cell carcinomas, and various other manifestations of the central nervous system calcification of Fox cerebri, ocular system hypertelorism, cardiovascular system fibroma of the heart, and genitourinary system ovarian cysts. The other is the xeroderma pigmentosum, a condition in which there is inability to repair damaged DNA. Exposure to chemicals such as arsenical compounds and immunosuppression are also well-known causes. How does this lesion develop? Remember the process of mutation and its harmful effects on the human DNA which leads to alteration in the cell function? Something similar happens here too. Tumor suppressor genes are basically genes that are involved in the control of normal cell turnover, that is, the process of shedding dead epithelial cells and subsequently replacing them with the newly formed young cells and apoptosis which is also known as programmed cell death. Mutation of the p53, an important tumor suppressor gene found on chromosome 17 is seen in basal cell carcinoma. Basal cell carcinoma is a locally invasive, slow-growing and usually a painless lesion. Most often, the skin may be slightly raised and the patient may complain of a growth that is pearly or waxy and has a white, light pink or brown color. It is seen mainly in the older individuals, usually after the age of 40. 
men are most commonly affected than women do you know how the lesion appears the early lesion is a slightly elevated papule or nodule with a translucent border and a smooth hyperkeratotic or a crusted surface multiple dilated blood vessels are also seen surrounding the area it can also present as a plaque or small ulcer in the later stage tumors may appear as a large nodule with or without ulceration or an ulcer that does not heal an atrophic plaque or a pigmented tumor did you know there are multiple types of basal cell carcinomas although they are rare multiple different clinical presentations are seen the most common form the nodular form presents as a small slightly elevated papule with a central depression it ulcerates heals and breaks down again the pigmented form of bcc presents with melanin pigmentation within or at the periphery of the lesion the superficial form presents as a scaly red colored lesion on the skin appearing as an atrophic scar the morphia form presents as an indurated yellowish plaque which can be either slightly elevated or flat the cystic form presents as translucent blue gray cystic nodules after learning so much about the clinical presentations let us now look into the most interesting part how does it appear histopathologically basal cell carcinomas are well demarcated lesions the nodular ulcerative lesion consists of islands or nests of hypochromatic basaloid cells arranged in two patterns the central cell and the peripheral cell cells appear uniform and mitotic figures are usually few in number intercellular bridges are absent the cells at the periphery of the nest are palisaded occasionally cyst formation may be seen the area adjacent to the tumor islands is mucinous the pigmented form has melanocytes producing melanin the superficial form appears as buds of basaloid cells attached to the under surface of the epidermis and the more aggressive forms presents as strands of cells rather than nests and have a spiky irregular appearance there is a clear zone of artifactual retraction around the tumor islands which is caused due to shrinkage of connective tissue around the epithelium to their variable densities can this lesion be treated can it be completely cured when diagnosed and treated early the prognosis is excellent to diagnose the lesion a biopsy of the affected area is taken most commonly shave biopsy is done treatment depends on the size depth location of the lesion and the overall health of the patient there are various possible treatment options which are as follows most surgery the most widely used method which consists of removal of a layer of skin observation under microscope followed by removal of many layers of skin until there are no signs of cancer excision wide local excision with a 1 cm clear margin followed by suturing or flap surgery curettage scraping away cancer cells cryo surgery killing the cancer cells by freezing them photodynamic therapy treatment using light topical by application of imikimod cream radiation used in early lesions or when the margins are incomplete and surgery is not possible what did you learn today basal cell carcinomas are not as innocent as we tend to believe although they are known to cause minimal damage they can be pretty unpredictable and turn aggressive very quickly the most effective way to prevent skin cancers is by limiting over exposure to uv radiation of the sun by covering the exposed areas and the regular usage of sunscreen